know, I, I just think it's absolutely wonderful that that you are you're, you're so committed yeah. to making this into a, a center for wildlife, as as well as a wonderful place, a peaceful place, mm. and a happy place where people can leave the ashes of their loved ones. Yeah. So f full full burials and and ashes as well, um, but the ethos of a natural burial ground is that it should have a dual purpose. It should have a purpose to exist other than just being um, a cemetery. Mm. So, and that purpose gives it a reason to be looked after long into the future. Now, we we uh, interpreted uh, that dual purpose as a as a nature reserve. This this land was a barren landscape when we first found it. Um, literally, no good to man or beast. There was nothing growing on it, and there was nothing living on it. Um, when we planted the, the 31 acres of, of, of um, wild flower meadow planted uh, native trees around the perimeter and um, put pond and wetland in. And it's proved its value mm. it, because we've now recorded nearly a thousand different species of birds, wildlife, insects and, um, and plant life. Now you've got around 30,000 plots here so clearly you're doing something right for an awful lot of people but do you think there are some people that wouldn't want to come here? I can't think of any. I say there's a few conventionalists that perhaps all they've got pictured is a is a headstone and that's what they want. Um, but it's only a handful. This place is is for everyone. Um, it's you know we have all faiths, all beliefs, um, whatever you're thinking. It's um, Catholic, Muslim, Jewish, Quakers, um, spiritual funerals, um, all the way down to humanists at the other end of the scale. Everything in between. Um, it, it is literally for everybody, whether it's a full burial or whether it's, um, whether it's cremated remains that they're, they're mm. interring here. Mm. You mentioned the help afterwards. I don't think there are too many places, certainly not in cemeteries, where the loved ones are welcomed back, that you actually organise events for bereaved families long after the, the initial internment. Mm. What's the thinking behind that? How does it work? So we have family support events. So one of our one of our most popular is Tea Cake and Company, which is um, the last Sunday of each month. Um, we invite bereaved any bereaved families, not just our bereaved, but any anybody that's still bereaved, um, still grieving, um, or still wants to rem still want to remember and share their thoughts and perhaps their grief and their loss with with others that have gone through a similar. Mm. Um, and we open our pavilion for four hours on a Sunday. Um, with free tea and free cake uh, to come and just share their thoughts, their memories um, and we still get a lot of original families that are supporting now new families as mm. well which is, which is just fantastic. Last Sunday we had about 80 or 90 people here really? um, through the course of those few hours. Yeah. What, what do you think bereaved families get out of that? It's a sense of um, belonging without a doubt, um, belonging to a, a larger family that, that have gone through a a similar, um, a similar loss, mm -hmm. um, but actually coming and sharing the landscape here. People come in and they don't just come for tea and cake, they come for a walk. Um, last Sunday we had um, the Surrey Hills Enterprises came and we, and it was our families as, as much as, as, their, uh, as their members coming and planting new hedgerows. 